Hello, my name is Ruben Mesa and I'm the director of the Mays Cancer Center at UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson. And I'm here at this 2019 American Society of Hematology meeting, excited about all the updates we're learning for patients with myeloproliferative neoplasms. Wish to share with you just a few of those highlights. As it relates to therapies, much to be excited about, much as a patient for you to be hopeful as we continue to learn more. This meeting re really represents the main global meeting of hematologists from around the world. We anticipate almost 30,000 individuals here in Orlando coming together, talking about every aspect from diagnosis, therapy, and yes, survivorship issues for patients with blood diseases of all kinds, but most particularly for myeloproliferative neoplasms. So pretty much the entire myeloproliferative neoplasm communities here from scientists studying the biology of MPNs to those developing therapies to those focusing on issues in quality of life. As it relates to MPNs, I'll highlight a few key things. So first, further updates regarding interferon. Ropegylated interferon is a long-acting interferon that is now approved in Europe and will be undergoing testing in clinical trials in the U.S. Uh, coming up this next year in essential thrombocythemia. Long-term outcomes from the European studies in polycythemia vera that led to its approval, a continuation study called Continuation PV, is highlighted at this year's meeting and helps to demonstrate that over time, two, three, four years, patients on that ropegylate interferon seem to have a higher likelihood of, of a marked reduction in their JAK2 allele burden versus those patients that have been treated with hydroxyurea, as well as likely a decrease in the rate of developing blood clots or bleeding events. So all quite favorable. Additionally, there is other information presented at this year's meeting, further suggesting that interferons may help to play a role in avoiding disease progression for patients with myeloproliferative neoplasms. Next, I'll highlight a few things as it relates to therapies for myelofibrosis. The first regarding the recently approved therapy of fedratinib, approved in September of 2019, is now approved for patients with myelofibrosis. Colleagues uh, such as myself and others are presenting a variety of updates on our data and experience with fedratinib. In particular, one, several abstracts as relate to the benefits seen with MPN symptoms and quality of life with use of fedratinib, both in reanalysis from the initial studies of fedratinib, the Jakarta study, which was for patients that had been naive to any JAK inhibitor therapy, but also showing those benefits in improved quality of life and reduction in MPN symptoms for those who previously had been on ruxolidinib. Additionally, we report data regarding the safety and effectiveness of fedratinib for individuals with a plate account of 50 to 100,000. That represents a group of individuals that usually don't have good therapeutic options Patients can receive ruxolidinib, but frequently do so at a reduced dose. The second drug that I'll highlight is pacridinib. Further updates on pacridinib, another JAK inhibitor that has benefit, particularly for individuals with a low plate account. Uh, and further updates on both an ongoing study as well as studies from the past demonstrating safety and effectiveness for those with a plate account of under 50,000 that would represent a unique option for individuals in that group if that drug becomes approved. Third, further updates on the JAK inhibitor mamalitinib, which previously had shown ability to improve anemia as well as spleen and symptoms for patients with myelofibrosis. We report here at this year's meeting a retrospective analysis of our prior trials showing mechanisms of action to suggest why mamalitinib may help to improve anemia and we look to learn more from that upcoming in this next year as a large phase three study that is global with mamalidinib will be opening up for individuals with myelofibrosis. Next, I would highlight that there are a range of interesting combination studies that are being reported here uh, with ruxolidinib. The first with the newly approved therapy of lespatercept. Lespatercept is a drug that can help to improve anemia it was recently approved in other blood diseases. And Dr. Gerds, myself, and other colleagues reported this year's meeting 
that the combination of lisperidone and ruxolitinib seems like it is favorable, in particular for improving anemia in those patients. We'll be learning more and there will be uh, subsequent larger studies that will be ongoing in the near future. Additionally, there's other combinations such as ruxolitinib and pomalidomide that are being reported that have a benefit as it relates to anemia. Finally, there are a variety of new therapies in development that are being presented at this year's meeting that have good activity. The first is an LSD-1 inhibitor from the drug company Imago that is showing a beneficial activity in its early days for splenomegaly symptoms and potentially fibrosis for patients with myelofibrosis. This drug is looking to impact the microenvironment within the bone marrow. Uh, it works against the megakaryocytes uh, in the bone marrow that are involved with both creating platelets, but we, leave, we believe some dysfunction in megakaryocytes is also responsible for the myelofibrosis process. The other drug I would highlight is from Constellation Pharmaceuticals, CPI 0610. This is a BET inhibitor, uh, and this uh, therapy is being tested in a trial both alone or in combination with ruxolitinib, but seems to have a favorable impact on spleen symptoms and potentially fibrosis. And we're excited to hear those further updates that will likely lead to larger planned trials for this next year. Finally, we report on additional efforts with our MPN Quality of Life Study Group at this year's meeting as it relates to a, a range of uh, opportunities for non-pharmacologic therapies to further improve the quality of life in patients with MPNs. So a lot of exciting things going on, a lot to be hopeful for. The entire community is, is out there working for you to better understand MPNs and better develop therapies that hopefully will help to improve uh, outcomes and quality of life for patients with MPNs. Thank you.